I'm really not a bad person, by the way. No, but the tone is such... I do get good ratings, you have to admit that. I inherited a mess. It's a mess. The tone is such hatred. And the leaks are absolutely real. The, the news is fake because so much of the news is fake. Story after story after story is bad. I won. I won. You I mentioned the vessel, the spy vessel off the coast of the United States. Not yeah. the right person, person that you think has nuclear weapons. Do you want to stop doing the two? No, no, no. Are they friends in the United States? 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 Whether we like it or not, he's the president right now, and he's definitely not acting like it. Whether it's his inability to just function, or his lack of mental capacity to be aware or even make cohesive statements, he is an all-around very, very strange individual. I mean, look at how he shakes hands. Look, 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 Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. Get out the boat. <laughs> look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. No one shakes hands like this. Like, what is this all about? You know, I'm almost convinced if you saw someone like Donald Trump on the side of the road wearing a nice suit, but it was obviously too big for him, hearing some of the rhetoric that he yells out, you would consider him to be a madman and probably cross the street if you saw him. But for some strange reason, he's the leader of the free world as we know it, and it's becoming more and more clear America is going to be on the wrong side of history when his story is done. Now, it would be nearly impossible for me to cover all the horrendous things that this man has done as legitimately every day he is doing something that makes everyone look at their phone and say what the but his actions aren't going unseen as the ninth district court ate the smackdown on his muslim ban and don't even start with that well technically uh i reckon it ain't really a muslim ban if you read the documentation it states shout out shout out shot shot shut up you hear me shut up shut up it's a muslim ban but thanks to the ninth district court that it is no longer an issue even though people are still having a hard time getting into the country being vetted a lot more vigorously even if you own a green card passport work visa or anything that would, would grant you entry into the country since trump has been stopped at this path he has found another way to circumvent this situation now understandably so we do want a situation where we can actually go into our country and know it's safe it's not about our safety though with trump it's about removing a certain facet of this community away from this community exhibit a guadalupe garcia de rios who is 36 years old and has lived in this country since she was 14 years old she works at a water park she has no criminal record she checks in regularly with her immigration officers and when she went in for her routine checkup she was detained and deported Guadalupe works at a pool where she cleans toilets where tickets for admission are seven dollars and fifty cents for children and ten dollars for adults but because Guadalupe no longer works their prices will go up for ten dollars for kids and fifteen dollars for adults this is the backlash wave of not having immigrants truth be told no one wants to clean toilets in a water park unless you know you have no other choice and because 
because we are entitled Americans, we believe we deserve the best, even though we didn't even work for it. I mean, that's what our nation was built on, the strength of other people. Because he's been blocked in these certain avenues, he has now started to take a more proactive approach, which is sending ICE agents into the field and proactively hunting these people down within the city, suburbs, and rural areas. The only problem is you can't find drug dealers, gang bangers, and bad people because they're not people with address. They're not people who check in with immigration. They're not people with driver's license. These aren't people who have steady jobs. They are bad people, so they do bad things, which require them to stay off the grid. But when you're an immigration officer and have been given a quota and directive order from your superiors that you have to be able to turn in X amount of people, which is 35 to each officer, which would take about nine years to take all of the illegal immigrants out of the country. Well, you start panicking, and when you start panicking, you start making brash decisions. And this further goes into the morale of the police system. If you were given instructions by a mad lunatic and it went against your own moral compass, if he told you your life would be in jeopardy if you didn't jeopardize someone else's, would you still do it? It begs the question, where are your moral compass? Did you become an immigration officer to bully 36 year old women with two children and no criminal records who work for less than minimum wage cleaning toilets at a pool? I feel officers who are proactively working and doing their job are doing our country a disservice and further stamping why a lot of the community doesn't trust police agencies anymore. And furthermore, let's start protecting the community. There are five ways you can protect yourself if you get a knock at your door. One, don't talk to police. If you get a knock at your door, don't open it. Even if it is an apartment complex, you are not authorized to open the door by law. You have your rights and you support and you know them. Also, your landlord is not permitted to allow any civil servant into your apartment unless there is imminent danger or a warrant. Two, go visit the ACLU and learn about your rights. Just because you're here illegally doesn't mean you don't have certain rights granted to you. They have a list of places where you can go, find information, and even hire lawyers who can better explain your rights to you or can assist you in the event you are captured or detained. Three, if you are an illegal citizen and you have a check-in, I advise that you call and reschedule if possible. As more and more people are being detained and then deported by checking in, which is what they are mandated to do, but these people have zero to no issues on their criminal records. So do a verbal check-in or reschedule if possible. As going to any immigration office might be a reason for you to be detained. Fourth reason, if you're one of the illegal immigrants who have been granted temporary amnesty because of your children or the Dreamers Act or any type of affiliation that would grant you access to this country or ability to work in free roam in this country, and you are asked to give a statement, never give a statement in pencil. As this young man figured out the hard way when he eloquently stated that he was not part of a gang and he had no affiliations or ties to a gang, the immigration officer in his case simply erased the first line in his statement, which then now reads, I am in a gang and I am part of criminal activity. Remember, bad people are everywhere and they wear uniforms as well. It's important for you to understand that you should know your right, which leads me immediately into my fifth reason, lawyer. If you're gonna write anything on a piece of paper, write the words L-A-W-Y-E-R. That's how you spell lawyer? That's how you spell lawyer? Okay. And don't say anything until they get there. Here are some ways that they get you guys and you don't even know it. Don't open any doors because they can lift your fingerprints. Don't touch anything. Don't allow them access to your phone. Remember, all smartphones come with a simple delete button. I would advise deleting all your information because even if you're not necessarily the one that they're looking for as far as immigration goes, they're assuming that you, your brother, your sister, your mother, your cousin, your daughter, your kids, your family, your friends, one of them might not be legal. And in the case chance that they can get that person through you, they will. Don't allow access to your phone. Even if you don't think there's anything incriminating on it, simple keywords such as auntie, cousin, love, trump, these words can be tagged onto your phone and then searched. Once your phone is decrypted, they can then go in and look at these text messages, connect the numbers to other phones, and go and find these people. Don't put your family or your friends at risk. Be prepared to delete your phone. That's the best advice I can give you. But if you're looking for some more, you know, it seems like Trump is going through the most threatening hierarchy. He has attacked Middle Eastern people. He has attacked black people. He has attacked Mexicans. Well, next on that list is Asians. 
And then after that, it's white people with guns. And then after that, it's white people. Based on this scale, you're feeling the wrath of Trump right now. My question to you, if you haven't been attacked yet, is who's going to help you fight when we're all gone? Because if you think that you're safe from the wrath of Trump, then you, my friend, are as dumb as he is. And our president is dumb as shit. <laughs> Yeah, good luck to you, man.